All right, so what I'm going to talk about is collective memory and the hive mind, or how forgetfulness could actually save all of humanity. So it's a pretty simple talk. All right, so I want to tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I really struggled in uh, K through 12 education. I uh, was diagnosed, it, yeah, and I love Spider-Man too. Um, I was diagnosed with uh, ADHD and dyslexia. Um, I, uh, I really struggled in focusing, and it wasn't for lack of trying. I put out so much effort, um, but there really was a biological thing that I was trying to overcome. And any of you who know about the education system, especially if you, um, you know, know the way it was, uh, say, 10, 20 years ago, uh, I feel like we've made some positive changes, but in those days, there was a real tendency to classify kids more than really try to transform them or change them, and I'm glad to see that that's starting to change. But I was just labeled. And um, this is still even hard for me to talk about today because I've, I've got a, a boy of my own and I wonder what he's gonna go through because ADHD is pretty genetic. Um, I had a situation with a teacher when I was uh, 14, 15 years old, uh, and he essentially wanted to set me straight. He wanted to say, you know what, uh, lower your expectations. Should anybody ever say that to a 13-year-old kid? 14-year-old kid, lower your expectations, right? Um, don't expect much out of life because you have these learning challenges. You know, just try to um, you know, do the bare minimum. <sighs> what a motivational speech. <laughs> But you know what, the, uh, the odd thing is that guy actually motivated me more than anybody I've ever witnessed in my whole life. Um, what made this worse was uh, I went to a parent-teacher talk. If you can remember being a kid, you go with your parents to these parent-teacher things, and he was talking to my mom, and he was saying the same things, and I still remember it to this day. Uh, I, could, I could bring back the, the words almost word for word. You know, don't expect much out of your son. You know, try to try to be patient, we're gonna put them in different programs, that sort of thing. And uh, my wife, my, my, my mom actually, she was, uh, she was very polite, she was very kind. Uh, when he left, she turned to me and she said, um, you don't listen to a word that bugger ever says. And she didn't use the word bugger. <laughs> <laughs> so that really motivated me, oh my God, I mean, I actually, from then on, I became obsessed with improving my own memory. That was my biggest challenge and focus. And I learned just about every brain training tool I could possibly get my hands on. Every, every method, every secret, every study skill method on the planet. And uh, some of you know the story. I did pretty well at that. I actually developed a, a new way to study and it led me into uh, the Guinness Book of Records. I memorized the exact order of 59 decks of playing cards, all of those cards, that's 3,068 cards in total, after seeing them only once. So zero repetition under the witnesses of two witnesses at all times, as well as two cameras, and it was all done properly. And the way I was able to get there is with a set of tools that I'm gonna show you today. And essentially, my message here is that the brain can be hacked. You can actually manipulate how your memory works. In fact, a lot of people do, and it's easier than you think. So after that, uh, I started doing really well, except in this one teacher's class that still, he still saw me as the student I was, not the student that I am. And I'll tell you one story, uh, uh, near the end of, of, uh, of, of uh, 12 and, and, and OEC year, if you know um, that, uh, that term, I started doing really well on some tests. I was getting 99, 100%, and then it was being reduced because he was certain that I was cheating. <laughs> and I had to redo all these tests in a separate room with my shoes off. Why, you ask, are my shoes off? Yes, that's what I asked too. And he said he was certain that the doodles I did on my shoes were part of some secret code <laughs> that was allowing me to, to ace all these tests. And I'm like, if I had the ability to come up with a code that you can't crack, wouldn't I have the ability to study? <laughs> 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 you know? So one time I lost patience, I was sitting, I was sitting in class, my feet were getting cold, I, was, I finished the test in like 15 minutes, I'll, I'll show you a cool technique in a bit, how you can uh, uh, memorize things quickly, but I couldn't hand in the test, so I, I literally was sitting there in the, in, the, in the desk, and I remember to this day, I looked at my shoes on the counter, uh, on his desk, and I, I did this, I went... <laughs> 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 I 
He hated me after that. He was certain that I was cheating. <laughs> that was not good. That was not good. But you know what? Um, I actually did make, make great inroads with other teachers, and we actually started uh, memory clubs, which are, are still around today. I run memory clubs in schools uh, all across the country. Um, I've uh, been around the world, best-selling author and everything. But I want to show you, this is how you know you've made it, people. This is how you know you've reached a success. Snoop Dogg. <laughs> he tweeted about me twice. I can't imagine what Snoop Dogg would be doing recreationally that would give him a bad memory. I can't imagine that. Oh no, people. Oh. <laughs> um, this actually led to a couple of interesting careers. I got really into technology and I started a, a biotech company. I, I'm an autodidact so I can learn seven times faster than most people. So I actually got involved in nanotech in the early days. I started my own biotech company and did some design engineering. And the neat thing about this is it led to a, a US visa to work in the States that actually was called the extraordinary visa. And I, I talked to, the, to the, the immigration person, I'm like, is this what I think it means? He goes, yeah, you're extraordinary. And I'm like, yeah, but like how many people have paperwork? <laughs> you know, like I could go to a bar and I could say, you really need to get to know me because I'm awesome and, <laughs> and I can prove it. <laughs> Um, so this led to a project I'm doing today uh, that is a, um, a robotics project that will actually create low-cost animatronic mannequins for department store windows. So if you start seeing in the few, next few years dancing mannequins in windows, I did that. Or I will do that whenever you're watching this. Um, <laughs> Uh, I've been on over 2,000 interviews in my career, uh, every major network, I've been uh, CBC documentary, things like that. But uh, you know what, I, I gotta show you one of these cool techniques just to give you an idea. So, so let's say it's a week or two from now and you're talking to somebody about you know, this great memory guy that you saw on stage, on the, you know, on, on the stage and uh, you know, he was really funny and he was so cute, you know, <laughs> everything that you're saying. But you know, they're gonna say, what was his name? And you're gonna go, I don't remember. That's a credibility issue. So what if I showed you in five seconds I could get you to never forget my name? Would that be cool? Would you be impressed? Okay, my last name is Pharaoh, spelled F-A-R-R-O-W. It's like Mia Pharaoh, but that won't work. But for some reason, when I put on this hat, boom, nobody forgets my name. It's a little tight. Maybe my head's swelling. <laughs> So, so now it's a silly hat, it's a weird hat, but you know what? Uh, ever since I started wearing it, people remember me. And I still have four seconds left. So that is part of a memory technique that I'm about to teach you. Uh, a lot of this publicity actually led to uh, my own PR company where I uh, help other entrepreneurs get PR and publicity. Uh, yeah, so I turned it into a corporate logo. I'm no fool. <laughs> Um, and also, I was, I was uh, telling the truth about the memory competitions. We're running memory competitions in seven different countries. I, I run the official Canadian memory tournament each year as well, and we actually offer kits to uh, schools and school teachers to do lesson plans right in their own classroom uh, at no charge, and uh, you know, we just want to try to spread the word about this. So here's the interesting thing. I come to you as somebody who has been working in improving people's memory for 20 years. And this talk, the research I did on this talk on collaboration, changed my entire view of memory. See, memory is one of those things that people have as their greatest fear of losing. Did you know that in survey after survey, people say that they would rather lose an arm or a leg rather than lose their own memory. It's their greatest fear as human, human beings. It's, it's at once our most personal possession, yet it, it, it doesn't really exist anywhere. It, it, you know, we can lose it in a moment's notice. So, what I discovered in researching this talk about collaboration is that your memories are not actually yours. We actually share all of our memories. We actually work together to memorize information. In fact, forgetting itself might actually serve a useful social purpose. But more about that later. I'm gonna teach you a memory technique right now, kind of something I'm famous for. This is uh, something we've done in, uh, in neuroscience labs. I'm gonna show you how to memorize a list of objects. Everybody who follows my directions and plays this game, you will be able to remember something that you think probably is impossible right now. And it has to do with a concept that I call the tiger in the jungle. So imagine you were walking through the jungle. We're talking, you know, going back to hunter-gatherer days and everything. Imagine you're walking through the woods and you see a tree and a rock and a tree and a stream and a tiger and a rock and a tree. What do you think you're going to remember most? 
Right, while you're running desperately in the other direction, you're going to remember the tiger. Do you need repetition to remember this tiger? Do you need to see it several times? No, because everybody who needed repetition is dead. <laughs> we are descended from the, the people who are quick enough to think to get back to the cave in time. That's what we're, we're. So essentially, we have this mechanism that we can trick the brain to memorize anything. And I'm going to do it right now with a whole list of very boring things. This is a, a list of objects that we use in a neuroscience test. Uh, it's called a random sequence test. And it's just a, it's a boat, ice, house, car, sweater. You'd probably have to repeat this over and over in order to memorize it, right? Most people should remember about five items. That's an average level memory. And nine would be a genius. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you images pretty quickly that fill in the spaces between this list so that you can memorize it. So the first one is boat and ice. Imagine a boat covered in ice. I'd remember that, especially if it was my own boat. <laughs> the next one is house, so we want to connect ice to house, and this is a house made of ice. I kid you not, this is a tourist attraction. If you know where I'm talking about, it's in Montreal, it's really cool. Um, this is the computer center in the house full of ice. Uh, the next one is a car, so I want to think of something crazy involving a house and a car. This is it, the car crashing into a house. <laughs> the next one is a sweater, so imagine your car covered in a sweater. After sweater is a fish, so imagine a fish made out of sweatery material. This is what I came up with. After fish is soccer, and I kid you not, somebody taught fish how to play soccer. <laughs> this is real. <laughs> All right, after soccer is a chair. So here is a chair, soccer themed. Okay, pretty simple. All right, after chair is panda. So here is a chair, panda themed. A little bit more interesting, okay. And after panda is a watermelon, so here's a panda to dressed up to look like a watermelon. And we're finishing the list here after the watermelon is a square. So I found square watermelons. They do exist. Um, and after the square is a tree, so I found a square tree. <laughs> All right, so let's go through this one more time. We have the boat, the, I the ice, the house, the car, so boat to ice. Ice to house, and just, just flip them through. Uh, house to car, car to sweater, sweater to uh, fish, fish to soccer, soccer to chair, chair to panda, panda to watermelon. Some of you are remembering already, watermelon was square and square to the tree. How many do you remember? Let's go through this as a group here. I'll take that down. <laughs> how, how many do you remember? All right, so what's the first item? Well, what's that remind you of? Ice. The ice to the, house. the house to the, the car to the, sweater. all right, and after the sweater, fish. and after the fish, Water. and after the soccer, chair. and after the chair, yeah. and after the panda, Water. and after the watermelon, yeah. and after the square, Tree. Tree, give yourselves a hand. That's great. All right. Now here is where I'm going to make a left turn and really surprise you, because this I've been doing this technique for years, teaching people how to improve their memory, especially young kids. We've done this with hundreds of items, and you did a great job, by the way. But there was a recent study that actually looked at married couples, especially couples that have been married for a long time, and it found that there was a special type of memory that happens when we're part of a group, and couples are the, the smallest group there is, right? So what they determined in this study on married couples was that alone they, sp they, they scored very, very poorly on memory tests. Uh, especially, of course, this had to do with uh, the study in, in particular had to do with dementia. So, uh, you know, they were, they were doing, you know, studies involving, uh, you know, age-related memory loss, things like that. And people were scoring very, very poorly on their own. But when they put the couples together and asked them to remember events from their lives, they scored incredibly high, higher than people in their 20s. Isn't that interesting? Isn't it interesting how our memory adapts to the people we're with and become dependent on each other? This is my little family, and uh, I'll have you know, this is my wife over there, I'll have you know that when I met her at a Star Trek convention, nice. yes, there's a story behind that. She had elf ears, I, I love elf ears. Anyways, uh, <laughs> so when I met her, she didn't believe I was a memory guy, by the way. She had, we actually have a picture of her going home and, and Googling it, but she didn't believe me at all. But I'm like, guys, honestly, I mean, if you were going to lie to women, not that we ever would, but would memory expert be your go-to? 
I mean, would that be like, yeah, I'm, I'm a memory guy. So that's, that doesn't sound sexy in the slightest, but <laughs> anyways, so uh, she did believe me eventually, and uh, you know, we have a, a bouncing baby boy, and, and he's awesome, and uh, the love of our life. Um, but I've noticed this myself. I have one of the best memories in the world, and I've noticed that we share information. We start to fill in each other's gaps. We become more dependent on each other, and it kind of made me think, well, maybe this idea of memory isn't so much the tiger in the jungle, the individual against the world. Maybe memory isn't just a tool that we're all using to try to survive, but maybe our forgetfulness actually helps make us more cohesive. You know, it's true in fish. It's actually been proven that fish have a hive mind. They share information. No one fish knows all the spawning grounds, all the predators, all the locations. And of course, uh, could you imagine if fish had leaders? You catch one leader, and like there's a beach full of salmon somewhere because they don't know where to go anymore? No, they, they share the information. Happens with bees as well, of course, the original definition of the hive mind. But the, interestingly enough, the more scarce uh, raw materials are, the more bees share information. I think that's something we could learn as well from them. And in fact, the opposite is also true. There's a condition called hypermnesia. It's the opposite of amnesia. They're actually, because of head injuries or, or whatnot, genetics, uh, people remember tremendous amount of details from their life. They remember all sorts of details going back years and years and years, but they also have a large number of them are depressed and feel isolated. Wait, I've got one of the best memories in the world. Ah, no wonder I don't have anything to do on a Friday night. All right, give me some love. What's my name? There we go. Okay, I feel better now. All right. <laughs> all right. So now we actually, the ultimate group that we're all part of is technology. Does anybody remember what this is? Yeah. Uh, those of you who do remember, you remember the very concept of what it means to dial a phone? Right? You remember how you hated anybody with the number zero in their number? You're like, view, oh my God. And you forget the number by the time. But, that, but having to remember the number challenged us and thus we had a better memory back then. Did you know that today there's something called the Google effect? You can, you can Google it. <laughs> and so what it, what it says is that we as a species, we uh, rely on technology and apps and things like that to do our remembering for us. So, what this all comes down to, if I'm gonna wrap this all up, I've proven conclusively, actually, that all of you guys can have a very powerful memory. Biologically, you have that ability. But at the same time, why don't we? Why does our memory suck? Why do you need techniques to do it? Biologically, you have the capability to get, like, don't break my record, mind you, but you could get it in the Guinness Book of Records. <laughs> So the reason our memory sucks is the same reason why we start to rely on our phones like Google Maps to find the location of pizza, but at the same time, that same phone is telling us what's happening a world away. It's telling us the life of somebody in, in the ghetto that we never would have heard of years ago. So my point is, and this pains me to say as a memory expert, but forgetfulness is actually bringing us together. All those times when you say, oh, I'm being forgetful because of technology, maybe it's a good thing. Maybe someday we, as a human species, this force of forgetfulness will actually bring us together just like the married couples. I mean, sure, I know from firsthand experience, you bicker from time to time, you may argue, you may complain, right? But you still need each other to find your way home. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.